In this question part, Chris also wants to reach the $20,000 target. He puts his money into a safe where no interest is earned, and he decides that each year he will add half the amount that he added in the previous year. In question C part 1, we have to show that Chris will never reach his target if his initial deposit is $9,000. There are slightly different ways to find the solution. Here, I will write down the first three deposits that Chris makes. He begins by depositing $9,000. Then the following year, he deposits half of this amount, so $4,500. And then again, half of this amount, so $2,250. The key here is to recognize that as we move from one deposit to another, we multiply by one half each time. In other words, we have a geometric sequence where the first term, so u1, is 9000, and the common ratio, so r, is one half. To show that the sum of the deposits will never reach $20,000, we'll use the sum of an infinite geometric sequence formula from section 1.8 of the formula booklet. If we can show that the sum to infinity of this sequence is less than 20,000, then we will have managed to show what the question is asking for. Substituting, we get that the sum to infinity is equal to u1, so 9,000, divided by 1 minus r, so 1 minus 1 half. Let's use our calculator to find this sum. I will press alpha y and enter to put in a fraction. In the numerator I will write 9000 and in the denominator 1 minus 1 half or 1 minus 0 0.5. The result of this calculation is 18000. Now we just have to write down that 18000 is less than 20000, so Chris will never reach his target. In the second part of this question, Chris wants to reach his target in 5 years. We have to find the initial deposit that Chris should make in order for this to happen. Since Chris is following the same strategy as we described in question part 1, here we are still working with a geometric sequence. We are looking for the initial deposit, which in our sequence is the first term, so u1. The target is $20,000, which means that the sum of the first five terms in other words, S5 is equal to 20,000. As we discovered earlier, the common ratio is 1 half. Since the common ratio is between 0 and 1, we'll use this geometric sequence sum formula from section 1.3 of the formula booklet. Substituting, we get that 20,000 is equal to U1 multiplied by 1 minus 1 half to the power of n, which here is 5, divided by 1 minus 1 half. Let's use our calculator to find u1. To do this, I will use the equation solver, so I will press math, the up arrow, and enter. On the left hand side we have 20,000, and on the right hand side I will start by entering a fraction, so pressing alpha, y, and enter. u1 is the unknown that we are looking for, so I will denote this by x, then I will open the parentheses and write 1 minus 1 half to the power of 5 or 0 0.5 to the power of 5. Then I will close the parentheses and move into the denominator. Here we have 1 minus 1 half, so 1 minus 0 0.5. Once we have entered everything correctly, we'll press graph twice to get the answer. So x, or u1, is 10,322.5806, and since we are asked to give our answer to the nearest dollar, we'll write that u1 is $10,323. Let's see two exam-taking tips that might help you maximize your marks on future questions. The first tip is related to the final statement that we made here. It is for you to keep in mind that if you want to earn full marks on show that questions, you often have to finish up your work by writing down a concluding statement. The second tip is a more general one related to formulae. It is a reminder that there is no need to memorize information that is provided in the formula booklet. 
instead of wasting time on memorization, make sure that you use your booklet every time when you are solving questions, so that you learn where to find specific information in this booklet. You'll be given a formula booklet on all your final IB Math exams, and hopefully your teacher also allows you to use this booklet on all in-class assessments.